Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The invention of the jet engine was a game changer for aviation. Not only did it drastically increase the speed at which aircraft could travel, but it also boosted their overall power. This allowed bigger planes to carry heavier loads across greater distances. Despite several jet and rocket-powered aircraft appearing during the Second World War, turbofans didn't become the preferred method of propulsion until the 1970s. Now, these air-breathing jets are incredibly advanced which subsequently means they require regular maintenance by highly trained technicians. From the first test to the last flight, these jet engines are always under close supervision. Both commercial airliners and military jets have engine maintenance schedules. In most cases, this is determined by the number of flight hours it undergoes ferrying passengers or cargo from one place to another. When an engine reaches its maintenance threshold, it is generally switched out for a newly repaired model. This process usually takes place at special maintenance hangars owned by major airlines such as Southwest. In the case of modern jets like this Boeing 737, Removing and replacing the engine can take anywhere from four to seven hours. First, the cowling must be removed. This protects the sensitive parts of the engine from weather and debris. Dozens of attachments must be disconnected before the engine can be dropped onto the waiting dolly. The average 737 engine weighs around two tons or more, so it's imperative that they be handled very carefully. Once the inside of the cowling is inspected, a new or previously repaired engine is brought in carefully. Though underwing engines are by far the most common configuration for modern jet airliners, they are not the only option. This Boeing 727, for instance, features three engines in the tail section. Most models have Pratt & Whitney JT-8D turbofan engines which weigh more than 4,000 pounds. Since they are located too high up to be removed via dolly, replacements are generally done outside the hangar with the help of a crane. Once an engine is removed, 
It will typically go to a special repair facility located inside or adjacent to the main repair hangar. Here, it will undergo a complete overhaul, which typically includes individual part diagnostics and repair, module disassembly, and a variety of hole and component testing. The first step is what's known as a pulse line inspection. This is an electrical evaluation of the entire engine. Afterward, the engine is disassembled into various parts. Typically, repair shops have different specialists for each engine part. By removing the components, they can all work on the engine at the same time while ensuring maximum accuracy. They will also be carefully cleaned to remove corrosion, oil, and dirt. Components will be tested for cracks or other damage and replaced if necessary. The goal of this overhaul process is to get the engine back to like new condition. Lastly, each part is inspected to make sure it meets the proper standards for being reintegrated with the engine. Even after the final reassembly, the engine must undergo extensive bench testing to ensure it will perform as expected. As with all other engines, proper lubrication is one of the most important parts of any turbofan maintenance. Depending on the part, some components of a jet engine can revolve at speeds of up to 20,000 RPM. Without lubrication, these could generate enough friction to create a fire in a fraction of a second. At GE Aerospace, Specialized technicians look at many different sections of the engine to identify fan blades and pins that are too tight or otherwise malfunctioning. Lubrication is also a big part of this process, as many of these parts are intended to vibrate but not loosen. By looking at the different colors on the pins, repair technicians can identify where metal was vibrating against metal without the benefit of a lubricant coating. Due to the low temperatures they encounter, contaminants in the air, and other chemical reactions, all parts of a jet engine are susceptible to damage and wear. Proper cleaning is the primary way maintenance technicians prevent this from happening. Major airline engine manufacturer Pratt & Whitney has started using a specialized engine wash system known as EcoPower. It directs atomized water directly into the engine while it is parked at the terminal, then collects the subsequent wastewater for purification and reuse. This time-saving solution allows for cleaning while the engine is still in use. And since it is fully self-contained, 
It keeps any and all chemicals from entering the environment. CyClean has a similar engine cleaning system. It too is carried out directly at the gate and takes under one hour to complete. These sorts of jet engine cleanings are not only designed to reduce corrosion, but they can also improve overall fuel consumption, reduce performance deterioration, and extend the life of the engine. CyClean engine wash happens about two to four times a year and uses pressurized hot water shot directly into the engine core. As with EcoPower, the resulting wastewater is captured for recycling. And where many engine washes can only be used in above freezing temperatures. Cycline can add small amounts of glycol to the mixture to keep it from solidifying in the engine during cleaning. Over the years, engine manufacturers like Rolls-Royce have invested millions of man-hours into developing engines that are more efficient, more resistant to corrosion, and can last longer in between overhauls. The most recent culmination of these efforts is the Rolls-Royce Trent XWB. A high bypass turbofan specifically designed for the Airbus A350. This powerful engine is capable of putting out between 84,000 and 97,000 pounds of thrust, but is considered the most efficient aerospace engine currently in use. Each engine weighs nearly four tons and boasts a fan diameter of nearly 10 feet. The assembly process is highly advanced, utilizing a combination of manpower, precision machinery, and robotics. The process can actually be completed with just a handful of personnel. Thanks to the astounding levels of automation involved. Rolls-Royce has also invested a lot of time and money into the development of new turbofan blade technology. The company's latest advancement is the hollow titanium wide cord blade. This unique blade produces around 80% of the engine's thrust while maintaining an extremely light weight. The unique construction process involves fusing two pieces of titanium around the engines, then introducing air to expand the metal and create the hollow center. It takes around 80 different robotic processors to create and inspect the final blade. In the end, these have a much better strength to weight ratio than traditional blades. They, therefore, can generate more thrust without increasing the weight of the engine. Yet another area in which Rolls-Royce excels is engine testing. Before any of its newly developed or freshly refurbished engines is installed aboard an aircraft, it must undergo extensive testing.
In 2021, the company finished its Testbed 80 facility in Derby, United Kingdom. The state-of-the-art facility is actually the world's largest indoor aero engine testbed, with tens of thousands of sensors that can collect data at previously unimagined speeds. The internal area is 7,000 square meters, allowing plenty of room to evaluate even the largest engines. For decades, Rolls-Royce has led the way in testing technology. Across the company's various facilities, they've implanted hundreds of machines to test different parts of the engine, from the fan blades, to the bolts, to the ejection nozzle. The company also leads the industry in bird strike simulation. To test how well their engines can hold up to such an event, technicians will fire a gelatin block into the fan blades at full speed. They may sound extreme, but these tests are the best defense against costly maintenance. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.